This is a brief look at the firing of a single chamber Japanese style wood kiln called an onagama. These kilns are built partially buried into a hillside and have the appearance of a long tunnel. They range in size as well as length of firing. Ours is a small version, firing only two consecutive nights and days. Wood is the single and only fuel used to attain a temperature close to 1280 degrees Celsius throughout. The wood acts, however, not only as the source of temperature gain, but also the essential decorative element, as most of the wares are fired without any applied glaze whatsoever. Built in 2012 by a team of participants, led by kiln builder Gian Daniel Wall, the Gaiagama begins with a tight firebox, opening out in the middle and tapering toward the exit flue, mimicking the shape of a candle flame. Constructed of handmade bricks and utilizing the self-supporting herringbone weave of Middle Eastern dome construction, there was no framework nor brick saw in its making. It is truly a sculpture in and of itself, a quiet whale, a dragon slumbering in our midst. A long, slow walk through fire. A two to three day process, loading begins from the deepest point in the kiln and works toward the mouth. The placing of wares involves choices that are decorative as well as technical. This is the laying of boulders in a riverbed for what will soon be a raging torrent of flame pulled from the front fire box toward the exit flue and up the chimney. The fire depends upon natural draw. Air drafting across the tall chimney in combination with the stepped rise of the kiln floor effectively pull the fire through the entire chamber. No forced air, fans, or mechanical components are utilized, just a keen understanding of raw elements in combination. The door is methodically sealed, brick by brick, once the final largest works are securely tucked into the firebox and the grate is laid. Many hands. This effort is collective, like a barn raising or a summit expedition. Each participant is as relevant as their works inside the kiln. Each is relied upon to complete the journey to create the whole. Conversation flitters and lulls, stories are told and silence is accepted. Technical to trivial, there is a precious intensity of focus and a peculiar stillness of time in the intimate confines of the belly of the kiln. Upon this island of the gods, offerings of flowers and incense are pervasive. For almost any activity and certainly any hearth, a blessing is given. At this very moment, this is a recognition that the firing is not entirely in our hands. It is a letting go of ego, a humbling of oneself to ritual, a partaking in the phenomenal richness of the Balinese culture. With a mantra of surrender and a hope for great learning, the kiln is lit. Firing, 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 night and day and night and day and night. Activity is constant feeding the fire's growing appetite, reading the pyrometer and recording temperature and observations, prepping wood, serving snacks, shifting shifts on watch, like crew on a massive sailing ship. Stories, laughter, thoughtful quiet, coffee, all fuel our endurance for this marathon, this sweat lodge, this test of temperament and teamwork. Throughout the firing, tiny particles of wood ash float through the kiln as if on a river of flame. These particles settle thinly or densely upon the ware depending upon the placement of a piece and create a patina that ranges enormously in color, texture, and sheen. The flame itself also plays a role in painting the clay surfaces as it searches, exactly like water, for the most expedient path through the kiln. And down 12 and 13 half. The temperature has reached its maximum. The coal bed has been built up and burned down. 
raked and fluffed several times, and the final reduction cooling begins. The firebox is force-fed, choking the combustion cycle. The chimney is inched closed, forcing the flame to erupt from blowholes along the kiln spine and out of any crack or crevice, searching for oxygen at all cost. The door is sealed, kiln sprayed down, the fury over. But still a couple more hours remain, keeping the internal atmosphere carbon-soaked. And then, at long last, sleep. Two days of silence, and I return to the world at large. Chink by chink, the tomb door is unsealed. From the wreckage that meets the eye comes slowly, one by one, still pulsating the warmth of life. Gems slick or encrusted, the flame path evident like a tattoo upon each surface. Here there is crystal growth in the natural ash glaze, there, the soft appearance of lichen, where the ash is only partially fluxed. The sea of pots, disgorged once again. The looking only just begins now. The variables involved in such a firing are many and only slightly controllable. It is precisely the enormous element of chance that intrigues and bewilders and intrigues yet again. And so, exhausted from sleeplessness and sweat loss, we walk away, perhaps one small vessel couched in hand, the relic from this rite of passage, this alchemical communal marathon this archaic, poetic forging of stone out of earth, meaning out of fire. <laughs>